We've lost two strikers now, Lukaku and Sanchez. Quite rightly, quite rightly. I love what Ali's doing with getting rid of players. He's got rid of Smalling, the excess. He's got rid of Fellaini. He wanted to keep Herrera, but I don't think he was heartbroken that he lost him. He's got rid of Lukaku. He's got rid of Sanchez. Okay, Sanchez and Smalling are on loan. Who else has he got rid of? He's got rid of Darmian. Um, that I'm missing some players here. I think there's actually a couple more he's got rid of as well, but all dead wood, all kind of remnants of an era we'd rather forget, all not Manchester United players, all not passionate about the shirt. There's a couple more, including your boy Paul Pogba in there, that need to go. Of course, if you get rid of everyone all at once, you'd be decimated. And we're already decimated because we didn't replace these players like I thought we were going to. I mean, Harry Maguire was a brilliant mm-hmm. signing. Juan Bissak was a brilliant mm-hmm. signing. Daniel James is looking like an absolute masterstroke. I know it was very early, but... Um, you know, so the players come in, but you needed to replace at least, you know, if you're going to get rid of Sanchez or Lukaku, and yeah, okay, give you for chance, but get him on the field then now, Ollie. You know, Garner's got to get more than 10 minutes, five minutes. You've got to get him on. And I, I get it as well. Maybe I'm being harsh there because Europa League's coming up, League Cup's coming up. He's going to get games and then he can force his way in, and that's probably the right way to do it. So maybe I'm, I'm pushing, jumping. No, I don't think you are. I think that. now's the time. I think we've proven that the experienced players in the club, the ones that are supposed to come in and have the experience that United like, people like Pogba, people like Matic, Lingard even, they come in and they don't perform. So why would you persist with yeah. that if you're only going to Solskjaer when you do have these good, young, talented players as an option who can actually improve and do have the raw talent and who do have the hunger to come in and, and really fight for their place in the team. People like Angel Gomez, Chong, Garner, you know, these are all players, Greenwood, these are all players that have, have got really bright futures ahead of them and you can get the best out of them, you know, much sooner if he starts to play them now and build for the future. Like, this yep. is the thing about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. What I, let's get on to the title of this video, which is, you know, will Ole Gunnar Solskjaer make it to the end of the season? Because... Uh, with the start we've had, it's very oh. ropey. The form that we've had, it's very ropey. Even going into the, the tail end of last season, it's poor. And if he continues to select these players that he has been, people like Lingard just aimlessly selecting them, not based on form, really, because he's been absolutely bang average for a, a very long time. You know, forget Paul Pogba's last three games where he was poor. Lingard's been doing it for... Going into the last season, he's been putting in terrible performances, yet still gets selected. So if Onigoni Solskjaer is going to keep doing that and having players like Matic come off the bench when he could maybe play, you know, some one of these younger players and be a bit more progressive, then I think he's going to lose the fan base a lot quicker than if he just if he just gave the youth a chance and we were clearly rebuilding for the future and we were going about it in a certain style and a certain way and um, and he's allowing the opportunities to, to these young guys because they do have talent. They've certainly got a lot more talent or a lot more you know potential talent than uh, the likes of Jesse Lingard to me. People like Chong, people like Gomez, they, they've got bags of talent at such a young age. So... It's a straight. It's a tricky one. I mean, as as it goes as a start, what I would say about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's start to the season is we got have that amazing result against Chelsea, and then if you look at the other games, I know it's easy to say this, but we have actually been unlucky in them. We've missed oh. two penalties. Even in the last game, we were oh, a little yeah. bit unlucky. If Rashford just scores one of those many chances he has, then Manchester United could actually yeah. win all of those games. So we have been unlucky, but at the same time, we haven't shown that cutting edge in front of goal. We haven't shown that finishing ability. Um, we're, we're lacking that. That cutting edge and, and that is a big problem at United and it's highlighted by the fact that if Martial well, picks up an injury we've got to stick Rashford up there or a 17 year old Greenwood Lukaku's gone to, to Syria we don't have the strength in depth and uh, if we are going to mount a serious challenge for top four this season then we needed that and we didn't get that in the summer the Glazers made Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job ridiculously hard by not actually giving we're three three key players short three key players short a midfielder to replace Herrera probably another the midfielder as well because we're light in that area everybody can see that and then some sort of a striking option as well because we are very light in that area that is that has made Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job really hard but if it continues the way it is if we don't get the results even if the performances haven't been that bad which you know in some occasions they have been quite poor um then he's going to find the pressure mounted on him seriously, seriously quickly. And you never know with the board, the Glazers, you know, if, if it's not going our way come Christmas time, let's say we're in eighth place, which would be totally unacceptable for United, mm-hmm. but you could also see it happening, then he might just get the sack. And, and I'd hate to see that because I think he needs time. Yeah. <laughs> what have you got to say on that? Okay. Yeah. I, I've, got a lot to, I've got a lot to say on it. Um and you talk so long. I know, yeah, I could see, I could feel you trying to butt in there. <laughs> I could feel we're driving. So, so, 
here's the thing. Here's what I would say. I'll, I'll just start. I, I did have some structure there, but I'll just go. I think maybe this start... Well, first of all, you, you were right. We could be sat here right now. Man United are four out of four. Um, we have been unlucky. But the problem is the fragility um, of United. That penalty against Wolves... And then the pat, you know, basically we need everything to go right for us. The second something goes wrong, we we melt like a knife, you know, like butter through a knife, right? Hot knife. Um, and that's <laughs> basically going back. Yeah, yeah hot knife. It's like going, right? It's going back to last year again. And as soon as something goes wrong, everyone's head drops. And I thought that would be different, and I think it will. You can't put it all on Maguire to come in and just save the day and this and that. And it takes a bit of time, and I think it will. What I would say is this. In a weird kind of way, well, again, factoring as well, I watched Wolves and Everton today, and by the way, they're two proper teams. They're not teams that are way behind Man United. No way. They're not teams that are way behind Chelsea. I think one of them may finish above Man United or Chelsea. I actually think one of them will finish above Chelsea because I think Chelsea are going to struggle this year. They're going to struggle in everything. They're tuned up at at home to Sheffield United. They can't put them away. It's like... They are really struggling and they don't have a, a solid... The way he's got them playing just isn't suiting them right now. So, But give him time again, you know. But I think it might help Oli this start, actually, because I think it might take it, well, hey, I've got nothing to lose here. Let's play the kids, you know. And then that will show them that it's more of a progression. It's more of a development. It's more of a transitional year. And that will give him some time because I do think he needs time. Um, if he starts to play Matic and Matter all the time, then, yeah, the fan base is going to turn pretty quickly. But if we're, we're if we're in eighth place at Christmas, but Garner's played 10, 15 games, Gomez has played five, ten games, uh, Greenwood's got on the pitch. Uh, you know what mm. I mean? Them young players have got on, and you know I would put two Anzibi in right now for Lindelof. To be honest with you, I don't see what you're going to lose there because Lindelof's bang average mm. right now. Um, I, you know, uh, I think it may buy him some time. So this might not hurt him. Someone made this point to me as well. And I think it's a decent point is that actually this could be a blessing in disguise, this kind of shaky start, because he may just think, fuck it, I'm going to go with the kids. You know, these are like melting and all around me. And that may and, and there's a couple of gems in there as well. Um, there is, um, you know, so I'm hoping that United will that will happen and will do well, though, because if we finish below Wolves and Everton in eighth, um, that will be a problem. Right. No matter what happens here. But, you know, the kids well, that's, that's good exactly what he should do, to be fair. He's a hero. You know? Because, yeah. you know, the, the experienced players aren't working out. We don't want to see the likes of Lingard and Magic starting games anyway because we know what we're going to get from them. They're proven gash. Now, if he, gets, if he gives the opportunity to younger lads, then, yeah, we can all get behind the fact that it's a rebuilding process, that it's not all going to come overnight, that these players are going to get better and improve, and that maybe in January we can add some quality to it. And give these lads an opportunity to prove themselves and, and yep. get that experience. It's not going to be any worse playing Angel Gomez than Jesse Lingard right now. You know, I just don't think it is. It's not going to be no. any worse playing Greenwood up top there instead of Rashford. You know, if you saw what Rashford did up top today, look, I know Rashford was scores that- goals when he's playing at striker, but he's not a, he's not yeah. a true out-and-out goal scorer. I think he is better out wide. He's got the pace. He's got the trickery. He's got an eye for a pass. And he can also score. And he also looks yeah. very comfortable cutting inside from a wide position and having a yeah. shot and things like that. Greenwood, born, yeah, early, Gre- Greenwood absolutely should be yeah. given the opportunity if Martial's not fit. I don't yeah. get why. I think that showed yeah. a little bit of a lack of progression from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer when he was um, when he was selecting that team because he could have easily just given the nod to Greenwood, which he even hinted at. But no, instead he, he moved Rashford. That's basically saying I haven't got faith in my backup striker. Yeah. He should have mm. done that. He should have done that. And also he needs to get a bit more ruthless. And I believe, you know, he said about ruthless about players and people have kind of been knocking him a bit, but now they can't because he's got rid of Smalling and Darmian and Sanchez in the same week and you factor that with Lukaku and Fellaini and players like that since he's come in right Valencia all these stalwarts that were kind of just hangers on he's got rid of them he needs to be more ruthless in games if they're not having a bad game he needs to pitch them off a lot earlier and put a kid on or even start a kid there's no reason Lingard's form he should be anywhere near that starting Mm. 11 right now I like Jesse Lingard I actually think that when he's on top form he is a absolute class player that is great to have around the place and great to have in the team but that top form comes it seems two months a year the last two seasons he's played lights out for two months and then the rest has been shite average Mm. okay 
So he needs, to, you know, so he needs to kick up the arse. Rashford the same. No one, he needs to be a bit more ruthless with these players and not be. But it's hard because he's still kind of, you know, he's not got that Mourinho or Van Hal or Ferguson aura about him yet. And there's no way he's going to have that. That comes from time. But he's like, you know, where he's invincible. He's going to be, I'm going to do what the fuck I want. want. He doesn't quite have that. And so it's going to be really tough. He's got to manage the situation. Because you can't just go in balls to the wall. And you, you know what I mean? He'll lose mm. them then. And then once you lose them, it's going to be it's difficult. It's such a well, different scenario, isn't it? Because when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer yeah. came in compared to like when Fergie was managing, it's like the Glazers, the owners, the prima donnas in football these days. Mm. It's different. It's not just about managing the team the way you want to manage it. You've got to also manage all these personalities. You've basically got to manage all these pampered, overpaid prima donnas. And that's what's very difficult about it. Like, okay, he he could drop somebody like Pogba, say. Let's say he dropped Pogba for the next game, but what sort of influence is that going to have on the rest of the side when Pogba's in everyone's ear or Pogba's looking very unhappy and he's a very, he's a big big character in the squad. And same goes for people like Lingard, say. I mean, we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. He might have a big influence within the dressing room. And if he's unhappy, then some of the other players are unhappy. There's all this discontent building up behind the scenes. And that's when you get problems as well. So Oli Gunnar's going to have to finally balance it. You can't necessarily just well, drop all the it's key really, players. It's really hard because you're dealing, yeah, you're dealing with different characters. When Ferguson was dealing, he was dealing with players like Neil Webb and Brian Robson and Mark Hughes and Brian McClare and uh, Paul Parker and Steve Bruce and all these players. I mean, Man United won the league. Really, they won the league because he dropped uh, Brian Robson to the bench that season for most of it. Do you know what I mean? And got Paul Lintz in there and we were doing some No-nonsense players, uh, yeah. So, but, and I'll tell you what, Brian Robson wasn't it bitching and complaining about it. If probably you know any any complaining and bitching because i bet he did happen face to face with the door closed in ferguson's office and that's how it should be done but unfortunately you've got this instagram crap you've got these players that are like you said pampered that you can't yell at them and don't get me wrong sometimes as well you've got to look back at 30 years ago and think well you've got young kids and you've got 50 year old man screaming and swearing in their face is that right you know, it is sport. It's not the workplace. I get it. But then we want the best of both worlds. Like I was saying about Facebook and Twitter, there has to be some kind of level of uh, respect you, you give an employee. Mm. But, uh, you know, at the same time as well, um, these guys are a bit soft, aren't they? And that goes for I'm watching Arsenal and Tottenham earlier. Oh, God. I mean, it was a great game. But, God, are they soft, all these players? It's mad, you know. It's mad that it's changed so much in twenty years. It is, yeah. No, the the game's full of pansies. I'm not just saying days. that because our dad said that. Our dad's dad said that. Everyone mm. said that as we were growing up. Everyone always said they're softer, they're softer. But they really are now. You know, you couldn't say that about the England team in the nineties or Man United team in the nineties that they were softer than the seventies. That just wouldn't have been true. Okay, the game may have changed a bit where two footed challenges weren't accepted anymore and stuff like that. But you couldn't say that the Man United team oh, in the nineties totally was different. soft. Like the nineties the nineties team well, United yeah. wasn't soft. If you yeah. also look at just look at Pe- like compare Pele to Neymar. Now Pele was never a tough player, he was never yeah. a hard player. But he wouldn't go down oh. unless he was really fouled. Whereas Neymar he's diving well, around rolling on, on the floor like he's bloody Tom Daly. It's pathetic. Well the world's changed so much even in ten years because people used to give Cristiano Ronaldo crap for going down easy. And I used to say, do you know how skillful he is? And, I, and he did, oh, don't get me wrong, not thing. but he never shirked a challenge. He never stopped. He never, you know, was w- would stop dribbling at people because he was worried about being kicked. You can't score five, 600 career goals. You mm. know what I mean? And, and not, uh, you know, the world's changed so much in 10 years and so have these players. And it's just, again, Pogba, I, it's so easy to think, but he is our talisman. He is so talented. He is likable in a way, <laughs> you know. You just want him to do so freaking well. And when he puts in a performance like that yesterday, you're just like, see, that's not a world-class player. A world-class player in a game like that does, you know, if that's Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo out there, if it's Roy Keane out there, if it's Paul Scholes out there, if it's players like these these players that we can go on and on, and we, we could use Frank Lampard, John Ter- we could use all these, you know, players from different clubs. They wouldn't have that, and they wouldn't put that performance in. There's no way they would they would have that. But Paul Pogba just seems like he's just listen. I, I, I've stopped well, defending man. Paul Pogba now. Like I, I mean, I I, I I ran out of patience with him a long time ago. To be fair, the infuriating thing with him is he's yeah. got all the talent in the world. You remember when you remember when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer first came in? Jose's gone. There was this big 
a uh, big thing built up between Jose and Pogba behind the scenes. Jose's gone, he's sacked. Now it's time for Paul Pogba to prove what he can do and shine. And guess what? He start, He does that yep. for about 10 games. It was bloody awesome. And he showed that form and consistency, the likes we haven't seen before and the likes we haven't seen after. And unfortunately, since then, he's been hit or miss. I mean, this season alone, he's put yep. in a couple of good performances and a couple of really poor performances. It basically sums him up. Yep. And he's on 300k a week. He is a supposed to be a talismanic player for us but we don't actually really see that too often and that's my problem with Paul Pogba like people think I've got this agenda against Paul Pogba I do have an agenda against Paul Pogba this is my agenda against Paul Pogba he's not bloody good enough for Man United he might be good enough for France he might have been good enough in the past for different teams but as as a United player in a United shirt when I'm watching him week to week he makes silly errors. He gives the ball away. He's not influential and creative enough, often enough. And maybe it's not in his favoured role, but he's, he's supposed to be this athletic player, this box-to-box player. Make it your role, then. If you're that good, make it your role. Paul Scholes, Paul Scholes could play central midfield. He could play even deeper if you want as like a almost a quarterback playmaker not his best position but he could he could play a CAM role he used to play up bloody left mid for England that is a footballer not oh I have to be in my guaranteed position here my my favoured position um, to to in order for me to put in a decent performance no just play football Paul that's the problem I've got with him like he's he's got all the talent <laughs> you know how, yeah I'm gonna leave I gotta go mate but I'm going to leave you with a sport completely off the topic, but this is how delusional people mm. can be. I had someone involved in soccer recently say to me that Gary Neville would not get into a top six side right now. It's pretty crazy, yeah. I mean, he was solid as they come, weren't he? That's a fucking <laughs> yeah. stupid thing to say. Kyle Walker. <laughs> Kyle Walker's a better right back than Gary Neville. Did any... See, these people, they didn't actually watch mm. it over here. They didn't watch... The game and know what a good defender Gary Neville was. Very intelligent solid, defender. He wasn't, phys- he wasn't physically he was. mesmerising or anything. But there was no left winger. He played all the best left wingers in the world. No one got the better of him. It seems you know, not you know, definitely not. So anyway, mate. Hey, good chat. Want to go? Just on that ridiculous thing. Racism is terrible. Solskjaer's gonna be. Uh, I think he's gonna be okay. He's gonna go. He's he'll do okay as long as he, as he gives you for chance, which I think he will. He's gotta be a bit more ruthless. Pugba's a knob, and no, you know, I want him to do well. I want him to do so yeah, know, yeah. well. That's what's so frustrating about him, you know? And, um, yeah. I'll see you later, mate. All right, mate. Well, thanks very much, Tactician Tom. Go over, subscribe to his channel, Tactician Tom. I'll put a link in the description. I'm going to try and get Tom on as, as much as possible just to talk about random things like this. It's really just, we you know, we don't have much time. I would like to have chatted a bit more about Onigan Solskjaer and what's going on with him. My personal opinion, just to leave you with it, is that we should give him at least the season, give him time, regardless of what happens, even if we're down in temp. But he needs to play the youth. He needs to be progressive, give these young talents an, uh, a chance, not choose the continuous crap that we see week in, week out of people like Lingard, Matic, even Pogba to an extent. If Pogba keeps putting in these performances, I've had enough. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for tuning in. Smash a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. You've been watching the Pigcast podcast on Flying Pig United. Take it easy. Have yourselves a good one. And come on, United.